Hello folks. Well today I was looking at some of my old RC stuff and decided to put together an old escapement servo to demonstrate how it was in the beginning of RC and the equipment we had to use back in the 50s. Most of you who follow my channel know I used to work at Kraft Radio Control Systems in the 70s, Made in America Radio, and Kraft was the first to develop the digital proportional radios, which is now the standard. Well, I've been involved with RC radio since I can remember, and after Kraft went out of business, I was contracted to work for Joe Breedy. He was famous with his dirty birdie pattern planes and gliders that he manufactured. Well, he also purchased Proline radios, and he needed a tech. Well, I was operating the International Radio Control Service Center after Kraft went out of business, so I took all that on, and it really kept me busy with a lot of people crashing stuff and sending them in to be repaired. But way before that, when I discovered some control using RC escapements, I dabbled in that, and I wanted to show you something that I put together just to demonstrate how it was with one channel. Well, all the planes were pretty big, and they had a lot of dihedral. That way they'd level out pretty fast after a turn. You know, they were mostly free flight planes, and the elevator was set with shallow climbs, and the only turning control you had was to kick in the rudder. So, you know, when making turns with rudder only in an airplane, that plane will not gain altitude since there's no elevator. All planes drop in the turns unless you feed elevator in, which, which we didn't have. So we made a lot of left-hand circles and landings were always a challenge. So here using my demo machine mock-up, you can see that the rubber band provides the motor control. Pressing the button on the transmitter sends the unlock signal to the radio, the relays clack, and the escapement moves. It stops when you let go of the button, but you really had to keep track of it all. But on top of that, engines were marginal and interference was well at hand. So the escapement unhooks when the relay energizes. It's pretty simple. And I used a shaft in the fuselage to run the rudder, as you see in this mock-up. Most of us did it that way. Well, each flight, I wound up the rubber band like this and made sure everything was good. And I've had rubber bands break, and you know that never went well. Gosh, I just can't imagine trying to fly today like we did back then. I can't believe I had the patience for this. So when I went to work for Kraft, while well, we were inventing new stuff all along, like exponential dual rates and mixers, it was a great time in the RC world. So these three flight planes tend to roll to the right a little bit on takeoff and slightly climb. We trimmed the elevator so it would fly like that. And by just pulsing to the left like that, the airplane would circle around to the left and maintain altitude. And uh, by making sharp turns or less turns, holding more or less, you can climb and dive. And today our radios are totally amazing and we don't even think about them. But back then, it's a real challenge, and we never gave up. Well, there you go, folks. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea what my mock-up does and how it works, how escapement worked back in the day. So thanks a lot for watching. Take care of yourself, and we'll talk to you next time. This is Dave Herbert, the Night Flyer. <laughs> Who the hell?